I'll never forget the first time that I ever cast demons out. I was casting them out of myself. I was violently throwing up in my bathtub as I was locked in the bathroom. And I kept thinking to myself, I can't believe how real deliverance is. It's been over 20 years, and that was still one of the most powerful moments I've ever had in my life. I believe that you're watching this video right now because you need freedom. Sometimes we see other people receiving deliverance and we think, I long to experience that in my life. Demons enter our lives because they have legal rights. So in this video, I'm going to go through all of the legal rights that give demons access, and then I'm going to take you through a guided process of self-deliverance. I wanna ask you before we go any further to subscribe to my channel. Hit the subscribe button and then ring the bell notification so you never miss a live. You know, right now, I want you to begin to prepare yourself because this is going to be one of the most powerful moments of freedom that you've ever experienced through the power of Jesus Christ. Demons gain legal rights to our lives. And I want to tell you that Proverbs chapter 26, verse 2 says, like a flitting sparrow, like a flying swallow, so a curse without cause shall not alight. That is another way of saying curses are never random. They're not just like a bird that flies away and just flutters away. It just, oh, a curse landed on my life randomly. That is not how it happens. As a matter of fact, a curse is the result. It's the recompense of sin. Many of us have ancestors, both on our mother and our father's side, that as a result of their sin, we inherited a curse. Demons will use legal rights to stay inside. Primarily, demons want to reside in your physical body. Jesus cast out the spirit of infirmity. He didn't just actually heal sickness. So some sickness is the result of the spirit of infirmity. Also, there are demons that want to abide in your soul, meaning your mind and your emotions, and they have legal access. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to briefly give you 10 ways that they have legal access, and I want you to try to discern which one or two or three or four of these legal rights could you be dealing with. Because then the last part of this teaching, which is confession, then renouncing, and then casting out, will actually make self-deliverance much easier. So let's start. Number one, if you are committing direct, willful sin, that means that you are practicing sin. You are actually doing things that violate God's design and God's plan. If you are in direct, willful sin, you don't always become demonized as the result, but I use the analogy of leaving your front door open to your house. The longer you leave it open, the more there is a propensity for an animal or a creature to walk into your house. In the same way, Saul was vexed by demons because he was in repeated willful sin. At the same time, David, he also sinned, but we have no biblical account that he was vexed by demons because what we do know and we do have a biblical account of is that David was quick to repent. Now, the next thing that gives demons legal rights, and you need to deal with this before self-deliverance, is practices of the occult. Now, this comes in many different forms, meaning you could have done a Ouija board, crystals, burning sage, thinking that you're ridding your house of evil, but in fact, you're inviting it in. There's many different forms of the occult in our lives. Going to a psychic medium, reading your horoscope, those things give demons legal rights. Next is inheritance, generational things. Oftentimes, people will tell me, Pastor Mike, I don't deal in any way, shape, or form with the occult. 
cult. I've never done it, not realizing that in their generations, both on their mother and their father's side, there is there was unrepentant sin. And as a result of that, a curse, which gave a legal right. And so sometimes people need deliverance from demons connected to the occult, even though they themselves have never practiced that sin. The next one is unforgiveness. For as hard as it is to hear this, scripture actually tells us that if we do not forgive the one that sinned against us, how can we go before God and ask forgiveness of him? And so many times we've asked God, forgive me for my sins, but because there is unforgiveness towards somebody who raped or molested us, somebody who abandoned us or divorced us, somebody who said a hard word or maybe bullied us, we have not forgiven them and it's blocking our forgiveness with God. And so you may need deliverance as a result of unforgiveness. And I'm going to challenge you to even say their name. Next is trauma. We all encounter trauma but wounds are open doors for demons. When you experience trauma, there is a break in your conscious. There's a wound in your emotions. And trauma, like rejection, sometimes people are rejected by words, and that trauma will actually cause an entry point for a demon. Sometimes a mother will say, I never wanted you. I, I never wanted to have you. I thought about aborting you. And there's a rejection that happens even even before birth, and you may need deliverance because of that trauma. Sometimes it is trauma that's ex that is experienced sexually, and you need to actually deal with the demons that entered through that trauma. Many people have told me over the years, Pastor Mike, um, I never felt a dark presence before, but when my dad abandoned me at seven years old, I begin to feel a dark presence, and a voice begin to speak to me saying, things like you're worthless, you have no value. That demon entered through trauma. Next is false religions. Many people were raised in Hinduism where they uh, there's idolatry that's connected to that. Many people are raised in Islam. Many people are raised in various false religions and what they think is a deity is actually a demonic entity. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that Satan comes as an angel of light. And so demons always masquerade as benevolent kind deities, but it's not a deity. It is a demonic entity. It's a false religion. But I want to warn you, I recently took a 23andMe DNA test, and this is not an endorsement of their company, but when I, I took that DNA test, I was surprised to discover that I have a small fraction of my DNA is actually from India, and more specifically, a group called the Brahmin, which were responsible for uh, Hindu temple worship. And so again, when you're doing self-deliverance, you may not be aware of the extent of what is literally been traveling down through the generations. And so you may say, I was always raised as a Christian, not realizing that genetically, come on, even in your DNA, in your inheritance, there is something that you need freedom from in a false religion. Next, demons will use legal rights and they will come in through ungodly soul ties. We know that Jonathan and David were knit together. We know that soul ties are used by God. The, the two shall become one in marriage. And so there's a benefit for a soul tie. But wherever there is the purposes of God, there are the perversions of the devil. And so many times you'll begin to obsessively think about somebody that you slept with and were had inappropriate sexual relationships with, uh, fornication, adultery, and your heart will go back to that moment because in the soulish realm, there is an ungodly soul tie. As a matter of fact, I believe that while I was even going through the legal rights that demons have, the Holy Spirit was partnering with me to reveal to you names of people that you need to forgive, names of people that you need to sever ungodly soul ties with. Next is curses. 
Curses can come in the form of spoken words. Oftentimes people will curse themselves. The Bible actually says that the power of life and death is in our tongue. And so many people speak death over their destiny. And then you have demons that partner with that spoken word, demons that partner with the curse. People will say, I'm always going to be poor. I will never get ahead in life. I will never find true love. I always get rejected. I And as they begin to say statements like that, they pronounce curses in the form of words. Understand that the Bible says that in the beginning was the word, which is Jesus. And so if words are that powerful, if Jesus was described as the word, then when we speak a word over our lives that is contrary to the word, which is Jesus, then we could be living under a curse. As a matter of fact, there's many people who have even been cursed by words by other people. We often think about this as witchcraft when somebody does a spell or an incantation or a ritual, but words can also come in the form of you're fat, you're stupid, you'll always be alone, and other people can pronounce curses over us. Next is addiction. Demons have legal rights to our life as the result of addiction. Sometimes it starts as a counterfeit comfort. I wanted to smoke a cigarette because I was feeling stressed out. I needed to tra take a drink of alcohol because I'm grieving the loss of a loved one. But those addictions actually lead to open doors to demons and it gives a legal right. Why? Because the Bible says that drunkards will not inherit the kingdom. And so when you cross that threshold from one drink to another drink to another and you begin to be become a drunkard. Now you are a covenant breaker. Some of you who are Christians, you confess Christ as your savior, but you didn't let the Holy Spirit become your comfort. I don't know who this is for, but as a result of that, addiction creates legal rights. The last one that we're going to cover is fears and phobias. The Bible says that for without faith, it is impossible to please God. The Bible says, perfect love cast out all fear. And so when we operate in the realm of fear and we experience phobias, that, that can become a legal right for the demonic. What does that mean? That simply means that we are taking our trust out of the trust in God. And we are moving that trust now into trusting ourselves, into trusting the medical community, into trusting governments. And as a result of that, we operate in the realm of fear and phobias. Some of us have inherited fears. We've inherited phobias. Some of you have fear and phobia that runs through your family. And there is a de demonic spirit connected to that. How how do I know? Because the Bible says, I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. What is that talking about? The soulish realm, that there can be a spirit of fear, right? But God doesn't give us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Okay, so now as we come to the last and final part of this video, this is self deliverance. You now have been trained and you've been equipped with the major elements of an actual curse, which brings legal rights. And so direct willful sin, the occult and occult practices, inheritances generationally, unforgiveness, trauma, false religions, ungodly soul ties, spoken word curses, addictions, fears, and phobias. And here's what you do. And this is how I begin to violently throw up in my bathtub over 20 years ago. You begin to confess those sins. You begin to confess those sins even on behalf of the people who have gone before you. And, and you begin to say, in my family, there's been an abuse of alcohol. God, instead of seeking you for comfort, we've escaped to alcoholism. And Father, I'm asking for forgiveness. Father, I'm, I'm modeling this for you right now. 
Father, I've went to a psychic medium for a word, but I should have went to your word for a word. I should have consulted the scriptures. I should have listened to a pastor, but instead I've consulted horoscopes and I've, Father, I'm sorry. I confess that sin. Forgive me. And that you begin to, you begin to confess. I will tell you this, as you're beginning to do that now, there is a likelihood that demons will begin to manifest. What does that mean? Twitching, convulsing, yawning. Many people already, you'll start to confess and you'll, you'll yawn. Your mouth will open because demons will begin to come out. Some of you also will vomit. Some of you will burp, belch. Some of you will begin to, uh, right now, maybe even want to turn this video off. But I want to encourage you to continue to go deeper because you're going to get free. So you start with confession. God, I confess false religions. I confess sometimes even within Christianity. I spent years in the Nazarene church and they denied the work of the Holy Spirit. I'm sorry, God, I've been in false religion. God, I'm sorry, forgive me. I confess all sins connected to Islam, Hinduism, come on, atheist, agnostic, whatever that thing is. And then you begin ungodly soul ties. You just confess it right now. God, I confess that I was a fornicator. I slept with these people. I, I, I'm obsessively thinking about them. So I sever and I cut every ungodly soul tie. Forgive me, God. And then you do unforgiveness. You begin to confess, Father, I've been holding unforgiveness against, and you say their names, Tim and Dominic, Steve. I've been holding unforgiveness and I choose, I forgive them now. And you begin to say that. I forgive, I forgive, I forgive. And you say their name. And then the second step is renounce. And as you begin to renounce, now let me explain renounce. This is very important. When you renounce, you are saying, I will never go back. I am ripping up the legal contract that is like a deed or a renter's contract, almost as if you are signing a lease to an apartment and you're ripping that up spiritually and you're saying, I renounce, I renounce ungodly soul ties. I renounce direct willful sin, occult practices, false religions. I renounce spoken word curses. I renounce every single word that I spoke over my life uh, that was not in alignment with God's word. And as you begin to say that and you renounce it, you are removing legal right. And then that gets you to the last and final step. You've confessed Jesus as your savior. You've been washed by the blood of the lamb. You have now confessed all of the sins that the Holy Spirit is helping you right now confess. Then as a result of doing that, you're renouncing and you're breaking every single curse and you're going down the list, just like I said. And then you tell those demons to come out. You tell them to come out. You tell them to come out. You say, lust and perversion, come out of me now. You have no legal right. I do not belong to you. I, you must come out. You begin to tell that demon to come out. Now, demons are stubborn. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. So you must resist. What does that mean? That means demons are stubborn. Even after confessing, even after renouncing, when you go to cast out, they're still gonna say no. You might have voices come out of you that are not you right now. You've got to be persistent. When you begin to deal with the occult, when you begin, you say, you demon of witchcraft, come out of me now. You demon of control, come out of me now. You demon of manipulation, come out of me now. And you begin to say that and you just begin to come out of me now. And you just go down the list. You spirit of unforgiveness, come out of me now. You foul spirit of rejection, come out, out, out. And as you begin to do that, after you've broken the legal rights, you will manifest, demons will manifest, you, you will, and here's the thing, do not forget that you have authority over demons. As a son or a daughter of the king, you have authority. So I wanna release you now to begin to take some time to go through each one of the 10 sources of legal rights to confess, to renounce, and then to cast out. And then I want you to tell me in the comments what you're experiencing, and I want you to read all the other comments of people just like you getting free from around the world. I am so thankful for deliverance workers. I'm so thankful for pastors and Christians that do deliverance, but I will tell you this, this is your next level. You are gonna, it's gonna start with you. You are gonna
are going to cast demons out of yourself right now. And so here's what I want you to do. Begin to do the work of confessing, renouncing, and casting out. Some of you started manifesting while you even heard me talking about it because the demons inside of you are so intimidated about you stepping into the fullness of the power that you have. Go ahead and do that now. I want you to take a second and I want you to subscribe to this channel, ring the bell notification so you never miss another video. And right now, I want you to check out this video about ungodly soul ties. If you still need to get more education about ungodly soul ties, check out this video right now and you are going to get finally free from all ungodly soul ties. I'll see you in the next video.